Welcome to Doris Visits. This is where Jean and I step off the ship just the same as every other cruiser. And in four or five hours, we make a film that hopefully will help you look around wherever you're going. Hey, we're in New York. It's a little different because we stopped for three days. So we had a great chance to explore New York. I hope you find the film as useful as we did going around on the big bus. We're going to visit the Empire State Building, the Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island, the Rockefeller Building, Central Park. We'll go from Harlem down to Southport and cover the Brooklyn area and much more. We've arrived at the Brooklyn Cruise Terminal. The Brooklyn Bridge is behind me and the Statue of Liberty is over there. From here, there's a fabulous view of Manhattan. If you take the ferry from Southport, don't worry, we'll show you how it all connects up. This is where the big bus tour starts, in Times Square. So you can hop on and hop off as many times as you like for the duration of your ticket. We have over 40 buses and we run every 15, 20 minutes. We're just gonna have a good old-fashioned great time. If you guys wanna be on live television, you can check out Times Square Studios over here to our left. You see where it says ABC News, Eyewitness News. That is Times Square Studios. That's where they film Good Morning America. Times Square is in the heart of Manhattan. It's everything you would expect. It's busy, it's noisy, and the queue for the half price theater ticket booth is huge. When you get on this bus, you will not want to get off. The first Hard Rock Cafe was in London, surprisingly. This one in Times Square is in the lobby of the old Paramount Theatre. On 7th Avenue, there are diamond plaques honouring famous designers. Madison Square Garden. This is where Joe Frazier took on Muhammad Ali, where he floats like a butterfly, but he stings like a bee. On the way to the Empire State Building stop, we pass under one of the only remaining street bridges. Standing outside Macy's, the world's largest store, and we're going up there. So we have a voucher with our big bus adventure ticket, which we've just cashed in, so we've got four more left. And now I'm going to look for the free audio guide. The Empire State Building Observatories are New York City's highest and feature unobstructed 360-degree views. Not a bad view. We found the big bus ticket a great way to budget simply because there are four bus tours and a night bus, plus a number of walking tours, which meant whenever we were tired, we could jump on a bus. They all interconnect and the different routes go everywhere, as we will show you. Plus, we had a number of attractions within the ticket, so we could exchange those when we visited the Empire State or Ellis Island. Fancy being a steel worker outside here. The greatest number of steel workers employed at any one time is 360. And when you come through this bit, which is the 80th floor, there's another lift which takes you up to the 86th floor, which is outside. It's a half hour wait for the lift, so as it's only six floors, we're going to walk up. So there are a number of lifts up to the 80th floor. Then it gets difficult, the number of lifts reduce and there can be a queue. So if you want to go higher and you see there is no queue, grab the chance, go up. Here's a tip, take a map with you so you can try and pinpoint everything you think you can see. It's great fun. If you have kids, it can be quite a competition. It is with the adults as well. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? Oh, and here's the other competition that happens on the top of the Empire State Building, as well as people proposing to each other. Yes, you'll probably see one. Well, the other competition is what films have been made there. So, swat up before you go. Answers on the Doris Visits page. Definitely need to watch Sleepless in Seattle again. 
You can upgrade if you want to to the 102nd floor. Still to come, Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island, the Rockefeller Building, Harlem, Central Park. Oh my. Stay with us. Now these ribbons tied to the fence of the church are called Prayers of Peace, honoring our fallen soldiers in the war on terror. Stop number five, Flatiron Building, Flatiron Building. Wow, do you see that building? Look at it. It was here where the modern rules of baseball were formalized back in 1846 by Alexander Cartwright and the Knickerbocker Baseball Club. Um, back in the day, Union Square Park was the site for protests, riots, demonstrations. Now today, the park is the site for protests, riots, demonstrations, and shopping. New York University, the world's largest private university. Peter Cooper, he was a 19th century industrialist philanthropist who founded Cooper Union, which provided at one point free tuition for students who want to get into the arts. Brothers Village is because of their YMCA. Anthony Bleeker. He was one of the founding members of the New York Historical Society, one of the oldest museums here in the city. This is our next stop on the downtown tour. This is our NoHo stop. This green building over here to our right um, is now the retail store Mango, but this used to be the Little Singer Soul Machine Company. If you saw the movie West Side Story, that's where Maria used to work. This is our Soho stop, stop number nine, Soho. Right off those steps is where they filmed those scenes from uh, your favorite New York City cop drama. Next to it, you have the um, federal courthouse. That's where you have famous shots like Teflon Don, John Gotti. Give me your money, the mugger said. And he looked at that mugger's knife saying, that's not a knife. Pulls out this gigantic knife and says, now this, this is a knife. Good day, mate. I see it happen right over here on our left-hand side of the archway of the Municipal The Brooklyn Bridge. The ship terminal's on the other side, but only few would walk in. This is stop number 11, One World Trade. So the Aurora's brought us in. We're in Brooklyn, and here behind me is the Statue of Liberty. We're going to take the ferry across to Manhattan because most of what you want to see is over there. And there are a lot of ships here because they're hiding from the storm. Now we're going out to explore. Most people would just get the ferry right across to Manhattan. The Brooklyn Cruise Terminal. You could take the long walk across the bridge. You can get the ferry, but it doesn't run quite when you want it. You can get the hop on hop off bus, or you can grab the metro. If you come over on the ferry to Manhattan, it's going to drop you at Slip C, Wall Street. The ferry drops you right here at the Financial District, Pier 11. And as soon as you get off the ferry, you could hire a city bike and take you all the way around the city. If you miss the ferry, don't panic. Just walk straight down to the end of the road. There's a bus stop. Get on the bus and ask for the subway. You get the B61, you get off at Trader Joe's or look for Santander. And it's Court Street. You walk straight down, you'll come to the subway. Oh look, there's a station over there as well. Uh, hang on, we just got off a bus. And if we'd waited, it would have come all the way around to where the ferry stops. This is the Seaport Museum and it will tell you the history of this area. This has always been a seaport. When the Dutch were here, it was all water. And when the English came, they filled it all in and built these houses about 1800. on the ferry, this is all you're interested in because this is where you'll land. You could get the big bus, which you could have got back at the ship. You can walk to the metro, which will take you anywhere, or you can just enjoy this wonderful Southport area. But as for the bus, we jumped a few stops. I'll take you back. This is stop number 11, one world trail. And F.W. Woolworth was a true rags to riches story. The guy grew up very poor on a farm, failed in business several times before he was successful. When he finally made it big, he was able to purchase this building in cash for $13.5 million. 
to learn more about One World Trade, check out St. Paul's Chapel over here to our right. Firefighters, police officers, volunteer workers use St. Paul's as a recovery center to save as many lives as they could on that faithful day. Over here on our right hand side, if you guys would like to explore the Trinity Church and Cemetery, one of the oldest churches we have here in the city, on Monday through, Monday through Fridays they give free walking tours of the church and cemetery. You just meet them inside the altar, the tour guide, at 2 in the afternoon. You'll learn where people like uh, Alexander Hamilton rests, Robert Fulton from the Fulton Ferry, James Lawrence who coined the nautical battle cry, don't give up the ship. They all rest there. This is Stop 12, Wall Street. You may have heard about the bull that was given to Wall Street. Now the New York Stock Exchange took the gift as an act of vandalism. They were getting ready to impound the bull. The people in New York protested saying no. Today people gathered around the bull um, to take pictures, selfies, and to do other interesting things with the bull. Could have said if you physically touch this bull, you get good luck. You have the National Museum of the American Indian, housed here in the former Alexander Custom House. This museum is free to the public, open every day out the week. Now it is time to get off the bus. Stop 13 on the big bus tour, Battery Park, is where you get off at the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Islands. One thing that New York has no shortage of is parks. This is probably one of the smallest. Walk across Battery Park and make your way to Castle Clinton and join the queue. So we're on the ferry going across to the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Islands. It's very windy and the queue is quite long, so you might want to get here early. I jumped off that flame room, the very top. That's when I was a stuntman before I retired and made cruise port videos with my smartphone. So that's another story. But what you should take on board here is that if you do the big bus tour from Southport, after having taken the ferry across the water, this will be your last stop. So you'll be doing Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty at the end of the day. This is the entrance to the statue, but if you want to go into the pedestal or the crown, you have to purchase your ticket in advance. You can't buy it once you're on the island. Some facts about Lady Liberty. She's 305 feet from ground to torch. Her waist is 35 feet. Her head is 17 feet and one fingernail is as big as your forearm. From here there's a fabulous view of Manhattan. This is Ellis Island, and this is where the immigrants came to when they first came to America. But not all the immigrants. First and second class passengers were interviewed on ship, and only if there was a problem did they come here. Third class and steerage were herded in here for interrogation. We're in the Ellis Island Immigration Museum. Ellis Island was the entry point of some 12 million people between 1890 and 1954. And this was the baggage hall. There are three major areas here. The first one's called Journeys, the Peopling of America. There's pictures and narrative and commentary from actors to tell you what it was like for this wonderful mix of people who came to build this country. Everyone from all these countries arriving by steamship. This is the registry room. After leaving their personal belongings in the baggage room downstairs, the immigrants were herded up here to register and the whole process could take several hours. 80% of the people entered without a problem, but 20% were rooted out and sent into the rooms around here for further investigation, either for legal or medical reasons, and some of them were sent home. And tragically, some families were split up. You know, a lot of families must have stories about their ancestors and not so distant ancestors going through this process. It's a good idea to do this boat tour in the morning because if you think the queue's long to get out here, you should see the queue to get back on. This is the Seaport Museum and it will tell you the history of this area. Don't stand up, keep your head down. Kodak moment. If you head across on the ferry to South Street and Seaport, you could get this bus. You will then head up towards the Lower East Side. But there are many, many routes you can take. 
and they all head back towards Times Square. A man who lived in that building married a woman from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, couldn't get her home for a visit as often as she'd like, so built a Cape Cod cottage on the roof for her. This is, this is the East Village. It doesn't look like much, but if I were 45 years younger, this is a neighborhood I might come back to, as I did in my younger days. of the rest on the bus between the stops and you can work out where the buses stop and how you can change routes. Many of the buses go to the same places but approach from different sides like the Rockefeller building which is huge. 192 flags representing 192 countries in the United Nations. This is the famous Rockefeller Center. This 36-story building was completed in 1937 between 48th and 49th Street in Midtown Manhattan. Location, location, location. This is central. It's a fabulous location and a wonderful building. So it rents out to various companies who just want to be in the Rockefeller Center. British intelligence used to be here. And it's always been television studios. NBC has 22 floors in this building and nine major studios and the famous Saturday Night Live is made in one of them. Who says I can't get Jimmy Fallon on Dora's visit? I carry this camera around with me just so you can see the cruise destinations. That's how much Dora's Visits loves you. Radio City Music Hall was the first building built at Rockefeller Center. It opened in 1932. This is the observation deck at the Rockefeller Center and you get a 360 view of New York like you do at the Empire State Building. What's odd about the Atlas sculpture at the Rockefeller Center is that he's not supporting the earth on his shoulders like the myth, but the heavens. You can find that right opposite St. Patrick's Cathedral. The Rockefeller Building is number one Rockefeller Plaza. The observation deck is at number 30. Rockefeller Plaza and that is 70 stories high. It's still lower than the observation deck at the Empire State Building. Now at this point, I think we should head up to the park. Let me think, how should we get there? Ah, the bus. Yes, let's jump a different bus. The blue bus goes up to the park, off to Lincoln, back to the park, round the park, up to Harlem, and then comes back down the other side of the park. Let's go. We're going to take the uptown one now. The night tour bus goes from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and you get it right by the M&M store, which is just there. On the right is the Fox Network and the News Corporation. As you go around, you've got a really good commentary all the time. The tour guides are really excellent. This stop is the Rockefeller Center where Jimmy Fallon records The Tonight Show. And coming up is the Radio City Music Hall. Behind me is the Warwick Hotel and the Beatles and Elvis Presley always stayed in the Warwick Hotel. The Blue Route is the route that circles the enormous Central Park and gives you all the information about the park. Stop number 23 is Central Park and Columbus Circle. Over there is the statue of Christopher Columbus. To the south lies Hell's Kitchen, also known as Clinton and the Theatre District, and to the north is Upper West Side. So this is the building of 
Sesame Street. This is stop number 24, Lincoln Centre and Lincoln Square. It's the home of the New York Ballet and the New York Film Festival. Central Park is huge and every single area is different so you should try and find some time to go in there if you visit New York and have your Central Park experience. Behind me is the building where John Lennon was shot when he came outside. So this is stop number 25 on the map and it's Strawberry Fields and Yoko Ono lives at the top of the building there and she said she loves it because she can see over the top of the park to Strawberry Fields. This is the Museum of JFK's Life and Times which brings together 77 images culled from the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library. Stop number 26 is the American Museum of National History which is comprised of 28 interconnected buildings housing 45 permanent exhibition halls. So over there is the Diana Ross playground. And the money's actually low. She Keep down because the traffic lights are really low. So we're passing the El Dorado and Michael J. Fox and Kevin Bacon have a place there. Your big bus guide has a virtual star map in their head. Al Pacino lives in building 353 on the fourth floor. This is Duke Ellington Boulevard and this is where he lived with his wife Evie in the later years of his life. It's 106th Street. There is a dispute about whether this cathedral, or Liverpool Cathedral, is the world's largest Anglican cathedral and church. This is the stop for St John the Divine, the cathedral. It's a beautiful cathedral. On the right is St Luke's and that's where they took John Lennon to when he got shot and he was pronounced dead. Behind me is the Women's College. General Grant National Memorial is the final resting place of Ulysses S. Grant, the 18th President of the United States. From where the number one train comes straight out of the ground, you're entering Harlem. At one time you may have been afraid to come here, but now Harlem has been totally cleaned up and is a fun place to visit. Stop number 29 is the Apollo. A lot of the jazz greats appeared here. Jaden Ford is here now. It was built in the 1930s for the African American community to come and see each other here. This is the African-American flag in Harlem. So that's Duke Ellington, his piano, and holding him up is his muse. Harlem Lake has 250,000 fish and a beach. You can fish here as long as you throw them back. 31 is the Guggenheim Museum, which has a continuously expanding collection of Impressionist, Post-Impressionist, Early Modern and Contemporary Art. Stop number 32 is the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which is the second most visited art museum in the world and the fifth most visited museum of any kind. So stop number 33, the Frick Museum, is a great stop for Central Park. It's right in the middle of the park. You can go to Strawberry Fields, you could go and row a boat great place to go in there. When Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vaux designed the park in 1858, they designated the area south of 65th Street as the Children's District. Features like the carousel, fanciful rustic shelters and the dairy where they could rent toys and buy milk. Remember Home Alone 2? Well, he was home alone in the plaza that's behind me. And across the road in Central Park, the pigeon lady is actually a real person. So in the park we've seen people taking their dogs for a walk, somebody taking a cat for a walk, and two men taking remote controlled jeeps for a walk. So this stop is Carnegie Hall.
Stop number 42 on the Purple Route is Grand Central Station and it stops opposite the beautiful main entrance. But there's a better way to enter. Follow me. Come round to the side entrance. By coming in through the side, you get to see everything and then walk down the stairs like royalty. Just to think, they nearly knocked this down in 1962, like they did Lincoln Station, and it's beautiful. I nearly didn't look up and I would have missed the astronomical ceiling. Come down the level and there's trains down here below the trains upstairs. I wonder if this shoe shine places get used or if they're just left here to use in movies. They've got all kinds of food here. They've even got an oyster bar. There's a transit museum that examines the impact of the seven train on the communities along its route, from Flushing to Hudson Yards. This is a model of new buildings that are taking place in the place that they had earmarked for the Olympics, but they didn't win the bid. And that one in the middle is a piece of artwork. It's called the vessel that you can walk around. Grand Central Station is on the intersection of 42nd Street and Madison Avenue. And Madison Avenue is known for the advertising companies and was the inspiration for the television series Mad Men. If you're touring around New York on a city bike, you can park it opposite Grand Central Station and go in and have a look. Two blocks up from Grand Central Station on Fifth Avenue is the impressive New York Public Library. A lot of good things have come out of the New York Library, including <laughs> Ghostbusters. And during the Second World War, this whole library was made available to the military for office space.
There are over 18 million books in here. The murals here depict the story of the recorded word. Moses with the tablets of the law, the medieval scribe, Gutenberg showing a proof to the Elector of Mainz. Learning to read and the student. The linotype Mergenthaler and Whitelaw Reed. Prometheus bringing fire to men. The Edna Barnes Salomon Room has recently been refurbished and turned into a Wi-Fi reading room. I'm going into the Rose Main Reading Room. There's a book I'm after. Excuse me, have you got Fly Fishing by J.R. Hartley? Before you go, we just want to show you the diamond area, just in case you proposed to somebody when you were up in the Empire State Building. It happens. Hey, thank you for watching Doris Visit. When you see these lights, you know you're in New York's diamond district. This is a, it's a weird neighborhood, because they'll be like, do you need a diamond? Do you need a diamond? Hey, thank you for watching Doris Visits. We try and make things a little easier, and we have films from Turkey, Troy. We found Troy. Uh, right across Greece, into the fjords, up to Iceland, and down to Polynesia and Australia. Please follow us, subscribe, and share Doris Visits with your friends.